U toku je 16 dana aktivizma protiv nasilja nad ženama. Statistika je, nažalost, i dalje crna, jer je samo ove godine čak 23 žene stradalo u porodičnom nasilju, među njima i jedna devojčica. A istraživanja pokazuju da bi svaki taj femicid mogao da bude sprečen, da su institucije adekvatno reagovale. Upravo će sa institucijama naredno dva dana, danas i sutra u Nišu, razgovarati sudija Johnny Gogo iz Sjedinjenih američkih država koji će govoriti o prepoznavanju i adekvatnom reagovanju na to rodno zasnovano nasilje na njegove obuci koja se održava u Nišu i zato je on naš današnji gost. Mr. Gogo, welcome to Nišu, welcome to South News. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure and honor to be here. Uh, with you uh, to talk about uh, gender-based violence and, and uh, how we can help recognize uh, signs and uh, help prevent uh, uh, gender-based violence mm -hmm. um, here uh, in Serbia and, and certainly throughout the world. So thank you for having me. Thank you uh, for coming. Uh, it's your first time in Niche, right? It's my first so time in Niche, yes. And, and uh, I, I love uh, to walk around your city and um, hopefully we'll have some more time to visit uh, some of the other uh, tourist sites uh, because I'd like to also visit uh, uh, you know, the sites of the city. So thank you. Uh, can you tell us for the beginning uh, more about your training you, you have here in Niche? So I was, I was uh, invited to, to speak uh, uh, about gender-based violence uh, as part of the 16 Days of Activism. And um, I was able to come from San Jose, California, which is just uh, south of San Francisco uh, in California. And um, I was able to be sponsored on this particular trip by the United States Embassy uh, a Special Speaker Series. Um, but I also want to thank uh, Maya, uh, who is also uh, my contact uh, in uh, Belgrade for bringing me out. And we have been doing workshops on uh, gender-based violence. Uh, again, to help uh, recognize the signs, help um, uh, intervene and prevent uh, gender-based violence. And, and so, uh, again, in partnership with, uh, with um, Maya, I started to do uh, Zoom presentations or um, webinar presentations with the university, uh, 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 you know, the police university uh, in Belgrade with the students. And then and that was in 2020. It was in, uh, during the COVID During pandemic. COVID, yeah. right. So we had to do it uh, mm -hmm. on the computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a really good um, um, relationship, uh, positive uh, uh, interaction with the students. And then uh, Maya was able to help me come out um, in person to Belgrade. Uh, my visit first time to Serbia last year, uh, December of 2021. And we visited um, uh, four cities uh, to help uh, um, train, uh, uh, you know, different law enforcement, social workers and judges uh, about uh, recognizing uh, signs of uh, gender-based violence and how to help victims um, and survivors of gender-based violence. And we had a successful trip last year, and so um, Maya and her team invited me out again this year. You are uh, in niche uh, just to uh to talk about uh, uh, important of uh, uh, indicators that uh, are uh, of gender-based uh, violence, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, what do you think that uh, more uh, that uh, most important indicators that uh, just uh, judges, uh, prose prosecutors, and the police should uh, recognize, which indicate that th this is just a gender-based? Uh, violence. Well, we, we need to be, uh, the first thing that we need to, to make sure everybody, uh, whether it's the police or social workers or judges um, and our community members, uh, we need to be aware uh, of, uh, you know, signs of domestic violence, whether it's, uh, you know, physical injuries and bruises or broken bones, uh, stab wounds. Uh, we also uh, need to be aware of, uh, you know, arguments uh, that take place, uh, uh, domestic ar arguments, domestic disputes, uh, because those are, those are signs, uh, potential signs of gender-based violence, domestic violence. Um, and then we have to make sure if victims come forward um, that we uh, are ready to listen to them and uh, document their, their, uh, their stories 
and investigate and follow up on their stories. And, and again, uh, when appropriate, um, the perpetrator uh, needs to be held accountable, uh, whether that's some time uh, uh, you know, in custody or in jail, whether that's with emergency uh, uh, protective orders, um, uh, restraining orders, uh, that's all part of, of uh, recognizing and helping prevent and address uh, uh, gender-based uh, violence, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is it, is it important to recognize family and gender-based uh, violence in institutions that is uh, to distinguish it from other uh, types uh, of, of violence? violence? Yes, thank you. Uh, excellent question. Domestic violence is, is very important because of the relationship between the parties. Uh, and it's usually, um, although the, the, the st statistics will, will uh, support that most of the domestic violence is perpetrated by men, and most of the victims of domestic violence are women. Uh, now, there are some cases uh, where obviously the women are the perpetrators and the men are the victims, but the vast majority of cases are when men um, are the perpetrators. And um, it's very important to recognize uh, and, and understand domestic violence because oftentimes, um, you know, the women will not speak out uh, because of uh, the relationship between the man and the woman, and oftentimes, uh, you know, the, the man is going to be the, 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 the uh, breadwinner or the, the uh, economic support of, of the, of the uh, female partner and sometimes the children, and so um, oftentimes the, the female victims will be reluctant uh, to speak out because uh, she does not want the male uh, partner to be arrested and, and maybe lose his job, and then there goes the support, uh, family support, uh, economic support. Uh, but it's important because if we don't intervene, if we don't uh, do something to stop the violence, then the violence is not going to stop. It's not going to stop on its own. Uh, people need to, to step in, so whether it's the police or, or the judge who steps in, uh, or social workers or family and friends, uh, people need to step in uh, when they see domest domestic violence, gender-based violence, so that we can stop that violence because that violence is not going to stop on its own and oftentimes it'll get worse before it gets better. And who is most important in, in, in this case? Uh, you said police, uh, officers. Uh, well, the, actually the most important person is, is the victim uh, mm -hmm. of, and the survivor of the to domestic violence. Mm -hmm. They need to speak up because not only uh, are they the very important person in this, in this uh, situation, but oftentimes the children um, are also uh, victims. Uh, secondhand uh, post-traumatic stress, when they see, you know, the small children, they see their mother uh, being beaten or, or harassed. Um, it, it, so those, you know, the children are also victims, and then the family members are also victims too, whether it's the parents. Uh, of the of the survivor, or it's the brothers and sisters, the siblings of the survivor. Everybody uh, is impacted by domestic violence, including the abuser. Now, the abuser needs to 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 have some counseling and some intervention, and sometimes the intervention again means removal of the abuser from the from the physical uh, uh, relationship. Uh, and then sometimes they also need counseling, whether it's anger management counseling. Uh, domestic violence uh, uh, assault counseling, whether it's drug counseling or alcohol counseling, substance abuse counseling, uh, again, anger management, all of that uh, counseling should be made available uh, to the abuser, uh, but ultimately sometimes the abuser uh, needs to be uh, taken away and put in custody for a short period of time and sometimes even for a longer period of time. Uh, I said in the introduction that uh, in Serbia just this year uh, we have uh, 23 wom uh, women died uh, in the domestic viol violence as well as one uh, two-year-old two -year girl uh, and six of them uh, had already reported the violence uh, to the authorities. So uh, what is the respons responsibility of the competent institutions when femicide occurs that has already been reported? Yes, and, and it's always very sad when the result of the domestic violence ultimately ends in the homicide uh, or the murder of the, the female uh, victim and then sometimes uh, the children as well. And that happens not only in Serbia, but it happens in the United States as well. It happens in California where uh, I'm a domestic violence judge. And, um, uh, you know, law enforcement, the police officers, uh, the judges, the prosecutors, we have a very important role 
in, in recognizing that abuse when it happens and when the victims report that abuse. And, uh, you know, the, again, the government officials uh, have to take the appropriate action to help uh, protect that victim. And again, sometimes that means jail, uh, custody time for the abuser. Um, and, and sometimes that means a long time in jail. And, and, and when the authorities, the police, the, the prosecutors, the judges, they hear uh, threats uh, from the abuser that uh, threats to kill the victim, we need to take that very seriously. Uh, and uh, that's why your program is important right now to share with your audience members, your viewers. Uh, and that's why it's important for me to come and work with uh, your, uh, your Serbian uh, colleagues and citizens uh, to travel the, the, throughout your country to help uh, you know, provide that awareness and training um, in these workshops to the police and prosecutors and social workers so that we can intervene and, and recognize and, and try to stop uh, you know, the, the ultimate uh, uh, homicide or murder of these, of these uh, domestic violence victims. And so uh, thank you very much for asking that question. And, and, un and unfortunately, um, as, I sh as I've been sharing with uh, the participants in the workshop this week, even the homicides occur where I live in San Jose, California, uh, San Francisco, California, the Bay Area, which is, I believe we do a really good job of helping recognize domestic violence and gender-based violence and, and preventing it and intervening and holding the perpetrators accountable. But sometimes uh, we uh, also fail because ultimately the perpetrators do commit the homicide and, and the murders. Um, so do you think that uh, the uh, emergency measures that exist in Serbian law that uh, are removal from the apartment or re uh, restraining orders are uh, uh, good enough? I, I think that uh, they are good enough and it just depends on uh, you know, the officials, uh, whether it's the police, the prosecutors, the judges, on making sure that, uh, you know, the appropriate uh, emergency measures, whether it's restraining orders or whether it's jail time, um, whether it's uh, counseling, domestic violence counseling, anger management, substance abuse counseling, all of that together uh, needs to be put in place to try and prevent uh, more harm to the victims and, again, try and ultimately prevent uh, somebody uh, from being killed or murdered. Yes. Can you tell us uh, what is the approach of the United States uh, of America when it comes to uh, gender-based violence? Uh, I, I, say, I, I heard that uh, it's something uh, uh, community policing you have. Uh, that uh, how, 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 can it, how can it help some investigations? Absolutely. And, and I'm going to speak about my experience in San Jose, California, my jurisdiction, because I know uh, and, and in particular, I'll, I'll talk about the state of California because I think the state of California does a fantastic job overall. But, uh, you know, we're only one state uh, of the 50 uh, uh, states that make up the United States, and some states uh, aren't, as, uh, aren't as good as we are in California. Mm -hmm. But in, in my jurisdiction, uh, again, um, because I was also a prosecutor, uh, for 20 years before I became a judge, and during my 20 years, we were always, I always had uh, domestic violence cases uh, uh, on my caseload, even when I was a very young prosecutor. And so I learned very early uh, about the importance of domestic violence and, um, and making sure that those who perpetrate uh, domestic violence are held accountable. And um, we also have community-based organizations that, that, that help uh, our domestic violence victims and the perpetrators and, but because we need to have that community involvement. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, law enforcement uh, has the most, uh, um, uh, has the best and most effective opportunity and chance to impact the change on the abuser, on the perpetrator. Uh, and again, sometimes that's a combination of putting that person in custody and in jail, but ultimately we have to change their mindset, which is counseling, uh, domestic violence counseling. And in California, we have, we, uh, man, it's a mandatory for the abusers who are convicted to have to uh, engage in 52 weeks, one year, of uh, domestic violence uh, programming, domestic violence counseling, mm -hmm. so that we can change that behavior around. That's great. Um, so um, do you think uh, that it's better to report violence immediately to the police by, by victims, or to first inform the org organizations that are dealing uh, with women's protection so that they can create some plan uh, together? Both. 
It's very important for the, for the domestic violence victim to report the abuse immediately to law enforcement so that way law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, can take uh, you know, their appropriate actions and investigation and again, uh, maybe arrest and remove the perpetrator, but also uh, for the victim to notify the, uh, the safety uh, organizations, the community-based organizations. And if, if the victim does not notify the safety-based organizations, the community organizations, then the police and the, and the prosecutor and the judge need to notify uh, those uh, safety organizations so that they can also provide resources to the victims. Because it's very hard sometimes for the domestic violence victims to come forward uh, to, to, to you know, break that cycle of violence because, again, of so many different factors from economic factors, you know, support, uh, uh, to pay, you know, the rent, to pay the mortgage, to pay for the food bills, to pay for the electricity, to pay for, you know, um, transportation, uh, pay for child care. Uh, all of that is very, you know, very important uh, issues for the domestic violence victim. But also the safety of the victim is, is just as important as well, and the children. And so that's why uh, reporting to the police and to the support organizations is very important so that we have mm -hmm. many people trying to help uh, address uh, uh, the domestic violence, the gender-based violence uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And for the end, I have to ask you uh, this. Uh, in Serbia, a woman said uh, that uh, the institutions do not believe them uh, when they report violence or when they describe the danger uh, they are in. Uh, so how can we restore the trust that must exist be between uh, in institutions and, and uh, the victims? The way we restore that trust is through um, good uh, police work, good work by the prosecutors, good work by the judges in letting the victims know that we believe them when they share their stories of domestic violence. Uh, and the way we help uh, the police restore that, uh, build that trust with the victim is we also need to give proper training and workshops and examples to the police uh, uh, so when they're at the academy uh, and then when they're uh, also uh, doing their police work in the field, in the communities and towns and villages uh, and cities, but also we need to train uh, and continual, uh, continuously train our prosecutors and our judges and our social workers in community-based organizations. So everybody has a part uh, in, in, in helping support our victims uh, when they come forward and, and share their stories of, of abuse, and we also have to support them because we also know uh, that in these domestic violence cases that the victim is going to be pressured by the abuser to change uh, the story, mm -hmm. uh, to, to recant or to retract uh, the story of abuse. Um, and so we need to make sure that uh, we understand that dynamic uh, of, of this very unique uh, domestic violence, gender-based violence uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, we said uh, at the beginning that uh, it's your first time in Niche, but you you tell me that uh, you said to me uh, that it's not the last time, right? Can we can we? My first time in Niche, and, and um, I look forward to coming back to Niche. And as a matter of fact, uh, we took a special tour uh, this morning because your your uh, deputy chief judge uh, Ivana uh, connected us with your law school here in Niche. And, we met with uh, the law professor uh, Darko, who uh, invited us, uh, uh, invited me in particular, to to speak uh, to the law students. Um, and so we're going to try to set up a set up a webinar uh, with the law students uh, here in Niche. And um, if I'm fortunate uh, to be invited back uh, to come and do some more training, I would like to come back to Niche and meet with the community again uh, to uh, do that training. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gogo, uh, very much for, for your coming here. Again, my pleasure, and uh, I, I appreciate you reaching out to me and letting me uh, answer your questions, and, and uh, I, I hope this, uh, your audience will be able to learn from this and be able to support our victims yeah. uh, and survivors of uh, domestic violence and gender-based violence. Me too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, vi ste gledali emisiju 15 minuta. Moje ime je Jovana Stojanović.